Yeah, yeah, this is it. Torque Monster. <laughs> what people live for, Roger. You torquing bolts. Roger, it's a rugged look, don't we gotta take this to Grandpa Roger's shop and Elliot in case you guys haven't seen how big this little boy's gotten. What do you think, bud? You're a Mopar puppy, aren't you? Yeah. There he is. Yeah, go take it to Grandpa Roger's. Okay. See ya. See you there. Alright, yeah, we're gonna fix this engine room real quick. Where, where you wanna stick it, honey? Right on this Chevy one. Okay. Over the Chevy. Chief's orders. Hey! Uh oh. <laughs> I better run after I put that in stuff. Oh shit. Oh, now I'm messing up Roger's assembly. God, yeah, messing up my. <laughs> Way to go. Alright, I think you've already messed up, so you're probably alright. That's a little better. I do the groove. Mm -hmm. So, what happens? Oil pressure hits this. It expands that seal out so it fits tight against the mm -hmm. shaft so it doesn't leak. You make the mistake of putting on it like that, it's like a funnel to the outside. <laughs> <laughs> and you will know shortly thereafter. Okay. There is one way to do it. The right way and the, and the you're crying way. way. <laughs> I've done it again. Hmm. Here's an aerial view of what Roger was talking about to you on your rear main seal. We can get some focus here. There we go. You can see that taper on the inner edge there of that rear main seal. So that's just one way to do it. She goes. Yep. The seal seals around the crank and the little blue wedges seal from side to side from the main cap to the side of the block. Is this side? Uh, did you add new threads to it or is this a different one? That's a different one. Just said pistons, rods, rings, and rod bearings. Pistons and rods and rings and rod bearings. Pistons and rods and rings and rod bearings. All right, there's your pistons. That is That is. I'll grab the rods. Our perfectly balanced pistons and our perfectly balanced eagle rods. oil galley plugs installed. So if you left those out, oil would just bleed out of that and not yeah. really get pressure. Right back in the pan. Okay. Yeah, you think you had a solved lifter cam because they rattle like hell. <laughs> so if they'd be figured it out, then the bearings would be in the bottom of the pan. Mm -hmm. But I hate it when that happens. Yeah. Cam gear going on the front of Frank. out. I actually can lay them out and rinse time to rinse them off good. Okay. Pull them dry and I'll need just one.
I come bearing a rod. There you go. Just one though. That's okay. all you get. Well, for a minute. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go get the other seven. Well, as a comparison, where I almost harshly misspoke last week, a little Chevy rod, 350 versus a 440 Mopar rod. It's pretty cool. Not interchangeable. No, not this time. Roger's gonna add a nice little chamfer on our rods to make sure that we don't maul up our bearings as they go in too. So if they're out around, you'll pick it up. If you only measure it one way, then assume they're round, but assume is not a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. Probably not with the high performance engine build. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That parts, I think, in, I assumed it wasn't going to do that. <laughs> yeah. So now we take that figure. We already know what the housing bore is there. We've measured all of the rod bearings. Mm -hmm. Now we torque this down, set our board gauge up, go back and check this, and then that'll tell us how much clearance we have. Cool. Set our board gauge up and we're checking clearance. Right at two and a half. Clearance, clearance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is it clearance or clearance? <laughs> clearance is a guy washing the parts. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. That's not right. Slacking, Roger, and get on it already. The only one not working. What are you talking about? I was just over in Dishwasher City on your pistons. Roger's got all the rods with the rod bearings installed, looking beautiful. I gave the pistons a little bath as well, and it's time to get those bad girls installed. Checking the end gap on our rings. I have so many videos of you just messing up talking. Well, <laughs> sorry, but I am the chief narrator, and that is my job. You say chief or cheap? Both. <laughs> I, I come at a, a low cost and a high volume of speaking. Yeah, free. Yeah. One day you'll appreciate all these videos. One day. So that tool is setting it down to where it would actually sit on the piston. No, it's just where they recommend checking the rings, the one inch down the bore. Okay. And it gets this way, it squares them up. Gotcha. So okay. we're checking our end gap, which is this little gap right here where the two ends of the ring meet because it's going to expand a little bit, of course, under heat of combustion, but you don't want them to expand so much that they actually butt up against each other and then bind because that would be very bad. Almost. Get, yeah, if you get to the point they're they're closing, then it will wad up in the in the top ring line of the piston. Right, so start eating away your wall. Stuff. Make it way of the lock, but the, there's several different styles. These ones look like little pigtails. Yeah, you're a pig, all right. <laughs> But the idea behind them is it makes several laps, so they're overlapping each other, so they won't, they'll have to really work to get out of there. Gotcha. So they can walk out and get out. Yeah, yeah, the single locks can. But the end of it will be up in this bore a little bit, and as you put the pin in, it pushes back into that groove. A lot of times you'll get a snap. Okay. Out of it, so yeah. You know for sure she's in. Mm-hmm. So magic number four is now number one. That's right. <laughs> so you got eyebrows up, bearing tang down. Where we need to go, but that's these. Oh, valve okay. release. Valve release. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
didn't know what you meant. I forgot you were from another state. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> country. It is a country, right? Long Island. Long Island? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right at the edge. Boy, that's a close one. Close enough. If you were real anal, you could take a feeler gauge and put it in mm -hmm. there and see, but that's a, that's a lot closer than it was. So now we're going to snug that down good. Don't necessarily have to go to zero, but just a number that you remember where you're at. Create your own zero, basically. Very gingerly go. Tap it in there, bring it back out, same routine all over again. Tough little bugger. <laughs> it's not cutting much. That's alright, we'll get it. If I've ever met a persistent person, it's you, so I know that <laughs> it doesn't stand much of a chance. Give him a test later. <laughs> okay, good. Falls in. If it's not at 20, then you work your way down and then you work your way up. After yeah. you grind it. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Is that honey. 20? There's a 20. Nice. Yeah. Winner. Okay. Most critical is the top ring because that's subjected to the most heat. Gotcha. The top ring kind of shields the second ring. Our mama approves. There you go. Put the stamp on it and we'll ship it. <laughs> We've got each end dip stamp. Mm -hmm. See, it looks different than this because it doesn't go all the way across. So what we want to do is set that over there. You don't want the gaps lining up so basic idea behind this. Roll this one in. Then you take the bottom one bring him over here at about oh. 2 o'clock and then you gently push down, roll it back around here, <coughs> clip it into place, then we rotate this back around and make sure the, those gaps mm -hmm. are still there. Okay, so then I think that was pretty good so <laughs> put the other one up here, push him down in the groove. It's Slowly walk it around, mm -hmm. gently push it in, feel that. See, it's nice and smooth, there's no binding. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you still go back here, okay? The ends are still touching, so that makes this ring at the biggest part that it'll be. Mm -hmm. Right. I've seen guys think they knew what they were doing and actually overlap that, <laughs> and they put it together, start it up, runs great, but boy, does it smoke. <laughs> <laughs> This is, this is what forces these two little stainless steel rails out to, to scrape the oil off the cylinder wall and it, and it pushes it back through these holes in the piston, mm -hmm. which turns to come back in here and then down into the pan. Oh, I see where they met, okay. Mm -hmm. Stock type pistons will have a slot here instead of, instead of a hole, and the uh, slot makes the piston a lot weaker. Okay. So the hypo stuff you'll, you'll always see individual holes instead of just a big there again in the old days they used the uh, oil ring was a single ring mm -hmm. and all that stuff was built into it you see his little lips oh yeah okay hmm. these overlay oh, that okay and that's what pushes yeah. the ring out once you get that in that groove you can see you see how far it's sticking out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you tear him, tear a motor down and you just question what's going on with this thing, and you see that this edge is nice and shiny, then that's telling you that that's how much has been yeah. wore off of the ring. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So, so on this one now, these rings are always marked generally. Let's put it that way, generally. Mm -hmm. If it's black all the way across, it's a cast iron ring, and it, and uh, and it dot. Sometimes it'll be a T for top, or it'll say top. Okay. If that's the case, this has to go to the top of the piston. Well, some guys roll these on, just like the bottom ring, but they're, they're a lot more brittle and they're easier to break. And if you have any questions of whether you got these ends filed down enough to make them smooth, you can just set them in the groove that they're going into oh, and say, hey, is it catching? Yeah, nice and smooth. Cool. It's okay. So you set that guy there. Is that one of the ones that we measured? Mm-hmm. That's the, the one that we did. So we're doing the one cylinder so we can set the cam up. Mm -hmm. So then I open them up just no more than a half to, to right. get the ring to drop over the piston. You know, I distort it. Right. Then we go to the top ring. And if you have a ring that has no mark top and bottom, if you look at it real close, you see how this has got mm -hmm. a bevel in it? Well, you'll find out if that's the type of ring that they're giving you, then it'll just be straight down here. So it'll be square across, square, square. And at that point, it doesn't make any difference which way it goes. Okay, this one's the top ring. You can tell by the shininess, actually what there is. You can barely see mm -hmm. a little dark line. Mm -hmm. That's the cast iron ring that's been cut, and this chrome moly material has been inserted into the ring. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you get your tool. <laughs> Sometimes it's both the same. Same thing. You start out on the front, kind of get him started in the in the grooves, and keep spreading until you get it to drop over. Then what I like to do: take a squirt can, a few good healthy squirts. The cylinder, bring it back up here, squirt a little on the pin, the oil holes, then put your little oil on the skirt as well as pistons down the grooves. You don't want to leave them like this so the oil can't get in behind them. Mm -hmm. Put your finger in, it'll raise it up and go right down behind them. And you just gently mm -hmm. rotate them, okay? And you go back, first thing you want to do is go back and find your expander. Making sure that the rings haven't jumped over that. Because sometimes it's a little tough to come up with. You look where the, the top ring, oil ring, gap is at. It's falling okay. He's over here. So we want to stagger this next one over here. Mm -hmm. So he's that far away. And then take the top one and spin him back around like that so you're that far away of that. And you're building a lot of motors, same bore size, whatever, or close to. You can get custom made sleeves. But this little thing here, as cheesy as it looks, it works like a million bucks. Hmm. This gives you a little adjustment here. Get them snugged up. You don't want them too tight, but just about like that. Then, in there, so you got a lot of clearance. Okay. Clearance, clearance. Mm -hmm. Clearance. Yep, cl clearance. So, think of them like that. Take your big dead blow hammer. Tap it down. So what we're doing is seating this mm -hmm. compressor. Sometimes they're a little grumpy. But... <laughs> and when you get through boring one, you put a little bit of chamfer on mm -hmm. these so it's not a square corner that you're starting up against. Mm -hmm. Pull it back out. Quick look at it, make sure you haven't folded that ring over someplace. Back and out again. Move around a little. Make sure all three rings are in there. Let's 
case. And these valve release. Oh, there's the problem. Okay. Here's here's the issue we got here. You put the head valves back in. See the clearance? Mm -hmm. Right here. It's not sitting in the bore square. Oh, because the dowels? Uh huh. It's holding that one side up. Gotcha. So, pop the old dowel out. Get him out of there. Damn what? you, dowel. This thing. That guy. Oh. Yeah, it's stopping the bottom of the compressor from seating. Mm -hmm. Okay, the inside of the sleeve's tapered too. So you slip that down on your stud, put that down, whack it like that, that locks it in. That's it is. And we'll try it again. Normally speaking, you'll use you'll have the rods will have the bolts sticking out the bottom instead of these that the, the bolt threads through this way. All right, so you want to protect. If you do, them. then a little rubber guide. You got these little rubber boots. Right. To stick up over the bolts, so when you tap it down in, if it goes in farther than you expect at the first whack. It doesn't go down, hit the crank, and scar it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got a little gap over here. I'll let you can kind of judge how how far you can tap this down before you get in the the ring close to the deck surface. We want to leave you a little bit of clearance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. Beauty. Okay. Now. Just simply grab all of the rod, tap her down. Now I've got a special little cheater. Stick a piece of aluminum rod up in the rod bolt. You got it right in so you know that it's not beating up the crank. First rod and piston is in. And again, your bearing tang, if you've got a stock type set of rods that you've reconditioned, you'll have numbers stamped on them. You just simply match up the numbers. that the stock ones use the shoulder on the bolt to center the two halves together which works fairly well but all your high performance stuff shoulder little dowels that are counterboard to set right up in here mm -hmm. all your rod bolts you'll see a, a little shoulder on them like this oh okay and that'll let this slide back and forth a little bit but the way they do these, boy, I mean, they go in right where they're supposed to be. Hmm. So it just ensures that both halves meet perfectly. Mm -hmm. Run them down a little at a time. Make sure that the cap gap here. It's pretty much the same, just go a little bit at a time so it doesn't have a tendency to have anything go cockeyed on it. Mm -hmm. You watch them, you feel it, they're just sliding in sweet. The most exciting part of them all. That's right. Your famous... Torquerama. Torquerama. <laughs> Be 45 pounds with the extra tough bolts and material rods are made out of everything else. Please torque at 65. Okay. Which makes the housing board stick together a whole bit, a whole bunch better. Okay. 
fit in the rings, you get ready to put the pistons in, but it's a lot easier if you, when you're degreeing a camshaft to only have one piston or rod in it so that you've got less drag. Mm -hmm. and when you're working with a cam, sometimes that's pretty tough to get a, a good reading on it if you've got too much resistance on it. So, those guys go in there. The tree of love. Yeah, well, dark rings, number two. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, we've been looking for that somewhere along the line. Mm -hmm. He turn throws this off. If when they're building the camshaft, they miss this pin a little bit one way or the other, in correlation to the center line of the lobe, mm -hmm. or if all three of them missed it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Then we can find the screw up and repair it. Okay. Which basically is the heart of a performance engine. We're degreeing the cam right now if you didn't figure out what was happening. And I'm totally the first time for me to do this. I've always wanted to know how it was done and I'm trying to understand kind of the, the reason why in doing it too. Roger was just it'll, explaining. It'll mess with your head, but yeah. it'll be good. And it varies with what you're doing with the motor too. Sometimes you have a motor that's building. You want all this power on the bottom end mm -hmm. or the top end. And by moving the cam and advancing or retarding it, it changes the way the cam acts and it changes the RPM range as to where it comes in. Right, because by adjusting timing, ignition timing can't yeah, that, change that. That is part of it, but, but the cam's going to run where the cam's going to run, and you're not changing that. Right, once it's set in relation to the root, the pistons and everything, it's never going to change that. Yeah, you can, you can twist the distributor until the cow, cows come home, but it's not going to get you where you need to be. Right. But it is way important on... Oh, it's wrong now. So, this is going to be interesting. Stay tuned.